Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. I'm Pastor Pete. And today I'm back with you talking about the prophet Samuel. And uh, we're going to pick up kind of the end of Samuel's story from the book of 1 Samuel, and it's in chapter 12. And as we talk about Samuel's story, I want to ask you this question. Have you thought about your legacy? You know, what is the legacy that you're leaving? We think about this during times of transition, maybe um, when there is a graduation and we're sending our kids off to college, or maybe when there's a retirement party and we're saying goodbye to people, or maybe at a celebration of life as we're saying goodbye to a departed loved one. We think about somebody's legacy, the stories that people tell about them, what their character was like. And today we're gonna look at the legacy that Samuel is leaving. In 1 Samuel 12, there's a lot of good stuff, and I want to encourage you to go back and read the whole chapter on your own. But we have Samuel giving a farewell speech. And in this speech, he basically, I'm going to sum it up for you. He basically says a few things. He says, I was good to you Israelites. I was different than Eli and Eli's family. They were evil. They were bad leaders, but I was a good leader. I didn't defraud anyone. I didn't treat anyone unjustly. And he basically says, during this time that I was your leader, God was the king of Israel. So that was the whole idea for Israel, to have a leader who would put God in the king role. But Israel turned away from that desire, right? And they wanted a human king like all the other nations. And so Samuel was the one who anointed Saul as that king. And you guys have been hearing a little bit about Saul in the previous days. But what happens is Samuel tells them this is a bad choice overall. This is not going to turn out good for you as a nation. And the reminder that Samuel gives them is that if the people and the king obey God and follow God's commands, then the nation is going to be blessed. But if the people and the king disobey God, then there's going to be a consequence given from God. And then to prove the point, to kind of put like this exclamation point on all that Samuel's saying, he says, God is going to prove that this was a foolish choice. It's harvest time right now, and God is going to send a rainstorm, a thunderstorm. So I've lived several years in the Midwest, and one of the things you know when you live in the Midwest is you don't want a rainstorm during harvest, right? You don't want your crop that's supposed to be dry to get all wet and soggy. You don't want to have to try to harvest in the midst of mud. So rain and harvest don't go together. Usually harvest is a time that's dry, and God sends a rainstorm on Israel. And the Israelites are dismayed at what has happened. Listen to their response. I'm going to read it to you. It's 1 Samuel 12, starting in verse 19. And the people said to Samuel, pray for your servants to the Lord your God that we may not die. For we have added to all our sins this evil to ask for ourselves a king. So they're recognizing, okay, this was a bad choice. God is proving this to us. And Samuel said to the people, uh, do not be afraid. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart, and do not turn aside after empty things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are empty. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great namesake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. So he's saying, hey, yep, you made a bad choice, but don't give up on following God continue to seek to follow God. Then he says this, Samuel says, moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. And I will instruct you in the good and right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. So, Samuel says this at the end. Yeah, maybe we're not parting on the best of terms. Maybe some of these choices you've made haven't been right, but I'm going to keep praying for you. I'm going to keep instructing you in the way to go, in the way you should follow God. So as we think today about our 
legacy. That's what Samuel's talking about here. What is your legacy that you're leaving? The people in your family, the people that you work with, the people that are under your influence, what are they going to remember about you? Are they going to remember about you like what they did about Samuel? That Samuel, even when people make mistakes, even when there's things that go wrong, Samuel didn't stop praying for the people that he was leading, and he didn't stop instructing them in the way they're to live. I hope that encourages you today. You have family members that you need to keep praying for. You have people in your life that you need to keep influencing to follow God. Even when they make bad choices and they need to do a little bit of a reset, you can still be that person who's leaving a godly legacy in their life. Have a blessed day, Calvary.